And this is an aviation maintenance case study. I'm going to talk about, in the theory of constraints world, this, these are the three questions that you're trying to answer. What do I change? What do I change to? And how do I make that change happen? Okay? I'm going to introduce probably some tools that you haven't seen before. You may have. Um, I'm not going to go into them in depth, but I want you to know of their existence. Okay? Fair enough? So here is an intermediate objectives map. This is a logic map. And it says over here, you've got the goal on the top. The second layer is the critical success factors. And the third layer is necessary conditions. And it works like this. In order to have this, the goal, I must have these. In order to have these, the critical success factors, I must have these necessary conditions. I cannot tell you how the leadership team embraced this simple method. It is, it's logic based. It was very simple for them to come up with the things in here. So in order to have aircraft availability meeting requirements on all shifts, I must have work scheduled to meet demand. I've got to also have optimized facility usage. And the facility in this case was a hangar. And I must also have optimized manpower levels on all shifts. Let's just look at this one once. In order to have work scheduled to meet demand, I must have an enhanced scheduling system. All these things need to be in place. Once these are in place, then it works its way to the top and you can achieve your goal. So that's the strategy that we used. Okay, and I know I'm going through this in a hurry, but I am the constraint. Okay, so here's how we use that intermediate objectives map. You'll see these, I don't know whether you can read these, but these kind of orange blocks in the theory of constraints world, you have what are called UDIs, undesirable effects. So what we did is we looked at each one of these and ask the question, do I have this in place? And the answer here was no, there is no formalized scheduling. So we knew that that was an issue. Right here, uh, I can't even read it. Reliance upon overtime with inexperienced workers. That had to do with manpower for peak loads. So all of these we can use to design our solution. Okay, so far? Okay. Okay, here is that interference diagram that I was telling you about. And it's very similar to what Kevin and Kevin's used interference diagrams as well. But I want you to think about this. What do you want more of? And in our case, it was more helicopters ready when we needed them. Okay, so then you ask the question, what are all those things, what are all those reasons why I'm not getting more of what I want. And you'll see interferences. Okay? So far? Simple, right? Well, the core team. Remember I said it was the subject matter experts, the people doing the work. <coughs> we asked them, what are the things that are interfering with you getting more of what you want? And they came up, oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was next. This is just the steps on how to create it. And it's, it's, I just articulated that. I didn't realize this slide was in here. Here's what it looked like. One of the things that's important is you want not only the interference, but you also want how much time are you losing because of that interference. Does that make sense? Right? It's, it's, it's like Kevin's picture. We can't possibly fix all of these immediately, can we? But if we put a time element with the interference, 
then we could create some kind of priority order, right? So understand that if an aircraft had to come into the hangar, being in the hangar bay, that was the constraint. Okay? All of these focused on the constraint. More wrench time is what we were looking for. What we did was took all of those and we created a Pareto chart. Anybody know what the Pareto principle is? 80-20. What's, what's that mean, 80-20? 80% of the problems or results come the activity. Okay, so if you focus on the 20%, theoretically, you'll take care of 80% of the problem, right? Simple. That's what we did. But we turned that solution over to this core team. But the key was leadership, leadership gave them the authority to make changes. I remember one of the issues was is that this was a huge complex. They couldn't find carts, carts to ride to wherever they needed to go because carts were here, carts were there. Carts. They put a system in place to actually have an, a, a parking location, how simple, for those carts so they knew exactly where to go what cart was assigned to this crew? What cart was assigned to that crew? Something that simple, but it took away from them having to walk around and find an available cart. That simple. But it was all those things, all of these things, that were getting in the way from them getting more wrench time. Right? Simple. What I wanted to do, remember we had 30 days. 30 days we had to assemble the team, we had to strategize, we had to get them involved, and we had to make the changes, the improvements to the system. So all we had to go on were the results of the Pareto analysis. That's all we had to go on. They were all within the constraint. Okay? So we focused on those top 20%, knocked those off, we also put together a priority matrix where on one axis it was payback and the other axis was ease of implementation. And if they fell in the easy to implement greatest payback, those were also uh, what we focused on. This was a team of seven hourlies and one supervisor. Okay? And when you see the results at the end, you'll you may be surprised. Okay. So leadership thought, anyway. So here, some of the things that we did, you'll remember the interference diagram. We went the full kitting for parts so that when an aircraft, an aircraft did not pull into a hangar bay until it was fully kitted. That meant that it had all the parts, all the tools, all the paperwork, the resources, wasn't allowed to come in. That really worked. And that took care of, well you can follow the arrows, that took care of a lot of these interferences. Let, let me just describe for you. They were meeting the requirements, but within 30 days they had to have a 15% increase in the number of aircraft and they had over 100 aircraft. So that may not seem like a lot, but 15% of a fleet size that's like 140, that's a lot of aircraft, additional aircraft. They spent no money, overtime dropped, and they were actually able to get a 20% increase all because they decided to listen to the subject matter experts and identify the waste and variation present in the constraint and allow these guys, and there was a girl too, allow these people to actually make the change to the system and um, the results were well worth it.